Now, all of this week we've been looking at uh, the subject of the heart uh, with the Irish Heart Foundation and others in advance of Happy Heart Weekend, uh, which is the Irish Heart Foundation's initiative uh, to encourage people to look after their heart. We've talked about fitness, we've talked about nutrition, and uh, now we're going to talk about resuscitation. Uh, hopefully you'll never need it, but if you do, uh, we'd like you at least to know some of the basics, and uh, Bridget Sinnott from the Irish Heart Foundation has come into studio to tell us all about it. Bridget, you're very welcome. It, it, you're, you see, it's very simple. It's one of the simplest skills that anybody could ever learn how to do. Um, very, very simple. It's been overrated for years. People think that it's very, very complicated, but it's not. And the idea really is getting in and reacting early. Okay, so we have um, Annie. This is Annie. Annie, hello Annie. Well, Annie isn't <laughs> saying very much because Annie in this particular situation has had what we believe to be a heart attack. Okay. Cardiac um, arrest. Uh, cardiac arrest, yeah. Um, so you come across the situation and, uh, you, you know, I suppose it's very difficult because you have a lot of people standing around saying, oh my God, what do I do? Yeah, of course, ring an ambulance, obviously. Um, what, what can we do now? What well, can you do Would now? you believe, David, that you saying there about people saying, oh, ring an ambulance, that's one of the first things that people actually forget to do. So the first thing that you need to do is just make sure that the area is safe for you to approach. Then you check and see, are they responding to you? So if there's no response from the victim, they then need an ambulance. Mm. And the ambulance numbers here in Ireland are 999 or 112. And you get through then to ambulance control and you give all of the details that somebody has collapsed. And it's now, it's a major emergency and everybody needs to get in. And then, shall I go ahead Please, and demonstrate? Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, let's, right. get to the, let's get to the, the nub of the issue. Um, what do you need? I mean, if you don't have anything, you have no Okay, if you have nothing, nothing yeah. your hands and your mouth will do fine. Okay. So, hello, hello, no response. David, you go call the ambulance on right. 999 or 112. The next skill then is just to open the airway and check and see are they breathing. So count for about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there's no signs of breathing okay, here. Okay, that is getting some sort of a breath from the yeah. nose or the mouth or this whatever, is or just, looking, looking this at is the chest. This is just checking to see is there breathing, okay. all right? Okay. And then you can go ahead and give two breaths. So I've given my two breaths and I then start CPR. Oh, well, what's the purpose of the two breaths? I mean, is that just to kind of get something going in the airway? Okay, well, that? sometimes by just even doing this much, what can happen is that the airway has been blocked by the tongue because when you become unconscious like that, the tongue can fall back, block the airway, and now we just need a little bit of oxygen. So by doing that much even, the thing is you might flick forward a tongue and the airway can become open right, again. Okay. And we then just blow in some oxygen right, first. Okay. The next really important thing, though, is to get in here and start pressing on the chest. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I'm back to two breaths again. And just keep doing that? Or just keep doing that. Until you get a response? I mean, I, I, you know, where... Okay, so it's hands in the centre of the I, chest, I tell you what pressing the, I up think and the, down. The big concern I have about this is that the responsibility is so enormous. Okay. And you're the first person to say, you know, okay, I've, I, I've met Bridget. She came on the programme. She showed me what to do. But, you know, I'm, I'm talking about somebody's life here. You are, but remember... And if I make a mess of this, what's going to happen? Okay, well, if you but think about again, it... But then again, as you're saying, the person's unconscious anyway. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. And the thing is, at the moment, that person is in a cardiac arrest. If you don't do this, their chances of survival decrease by 10% per minute. Right. If you do get in and start pressing on the chest, and even if you don't get the breaths in, it's the pressing on the chest is the main thing. By doing that, you double someone's chances of survival, right, okay. which is huge, okay. Okay. huge. Brilliant. And the idea is that 75% of people who collapse are in what we call a shockable rhythm. Mm. And this is where we have our automated external defibrillators. Right. Now, we, 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 just, to very, just to clarify mm -hmm. that very simply, two breaths, 30 presses. Keep going with that. And is that it, or do you repeat? Keep going, until 30 to 2, 30 to 2, 30 to 2, okay. until trained help arrives or somebody arrives with an AED. Okay. Because when the defibrillator arrives, now you get the defibrillator. Show us the defibrillator. Okay. I mean, not everywhere has these, but they no. are. And there's uh, several different types and models and makes. This was just one that I picked up this morning. Um, so what they are is they're a little electronic box. You attach the pads onto the chest, and I'll show you all that now in a few mm. minutes. But you attach the pads onto the chest, and you, the defibrillator, when it's switched on then, it starts to tell you what to do. It okay. starts to speak to you the minute that you switch it on. So it's like having somebody stand and telling you what to do. Right. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. 
Okay. Plug in pads connector. I'm switch it off. All right. So it's it's self-explanatory, and and yet in 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 situations like sports clubs, like schools, and so on, you've already had a run through of this, presumably, or a lot there of people will know how to do it. Exactly. What, what we suggest is that people come and that they do a CPR course because to use the AED on its own or to do the CPR on its own, it's not always a success. Mm. The two together, definitely, there's a huge chance of survival. Right. And and just the simple pads, just show them. We okay. won't have time to do the whole thing, but, but no, that's they're all right. they're all very straightforward. The pads, it's marked where they're to go on the chest. So one will peel off and go here, mm. and the other one will peel off and go over here. Okay. And it tells you then exactly what to do. It tells you whether there's a shock advised or there's not a shock advised. The light will light up, and you just make sure that everybody stands back, and then the shock can be delivered. It has its own uh, current in there, its own... Yes, it, it has. Oh, okay, okay. And, and it also reads it. It's like having the cardiologist or somebody who's able to read rhythms standing there doing it, only the machine does it, and it will not shock inappropriately. Mm. That's the thing, that you can't make the mistake. It's not going to give a shock inappropriate. Have you um, had reports at the foundation of how these defibrillators have acted in an emergency, whether they've, they've done the business, if you like? There have been several saves, several saves around the country. Um, Dublin Airport and Crow Park are great examples of where a good responder scheme works, where you have people trained up in CPR and in AED and people collapse and, and a quick response and we're finding that there are so many saves around the country. We're trying to document them. We see them in the newspapers. It has made a huge, huge difference. There's no doubt about it. Now, just for people who, who have seen this, and we've had a very brief look at this, uh, a very, in fact, you know something? That's probably the quickest and most efficient course in CPR <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Um, you know, if they want to do more about this, what can they do? Okay, if you want to learn more about CPR, you can go to the Irish Heart Foundation website, www.irishheart.ie. Click on to resuscitation and there's a list then of affiliated training sites and there are sites all over the country who offer training and you can make contact with them and see where their classes are on and, um, and they will oblige and you know and I mean it is it's such a such a simple skill if there was nothing else I could get through to here is just how simple it is to do this and it saves lives. And the message is um, have confidence in yourself because if you don't do anything you're letting someone slip away. Well, 75% of cardiac arrests happen in the home in front of a loved one. So it's more than likely one of your own family that you'll end up doing CPR on. So my thing would be that everybody in Ireland should know how to do CPR. Okay, Bridget, listen, thanks a million for coming in. I, I must say, Annie's been Dave. one of the most compliant guests we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't fidget, doesn't move around. And uh, it's very nice to see you, and thank you very much. Thanks that's that's very part much. of our, uh, our look at uh, Happy Heart Week and Weekend. Uh, all coming up uh, across this week. Uh, tomorrow on the evening show, we'll be looking at more. We'll be talking uh, about your heart and what you can do about it. And as you know, we've been featuring it uh, all across this week on this program. That's our lot for today. Uh, join us for more tomorrow on the evening show. And thanks for watching.